And since I'm enjoying mine grenades so much, effectively throwing them at you, let me throw another one. And that is the simple fact that components are independent by default. And if this at the moment sounds like, okay, well, what's the big deal? Let me show you an example. And after that, I'll probably spend five minutes just raving about it. And let's start, I guess, by removing the events. Again, we cover the basics. We'll return to events many times throughout the course. It's one of the main features to any application if it's dynamic. So there's no need to keep that component here. It's always available in the readme and therefore I'm going to go to index and first I'll remove the reference and then I'll actually remove the component. And now let's try to set up an event in the book component. And it's going to be somewhat straightforward where I want to set up a function. I'll call this display title. If you want to practice on setting up anonymous callback functions, you can definitely do so. In my case, I'll have a reference and I simply want to log a title. That's it. Not much. And of course, we do need to set up the event. We need to reference the function. And it kind of makes sense to have some kind of value in there as far as the value inside of the button. So let's start here. It doesn't really matter where you place it. I think I'm going to do it in between just because I have some margins. So let's go here with on click. For now, we don't have the function. So let me first just type display title. And then above it, let's go with that function const display title. And let's go here and log that. So I already have the log. So just so I can speed this up, I'll copy and paste. I'll uncomment this one. And we're going to go with title. So what am I logging here? A title prop, correct? So let's go here. Let's say display title. Let's save it. Let's find the button somewhere here. And check it out right away in the console. I see the same exact title that is displayed in a component. And guess what? If I click the same button in a second component, it does the same. Only this time, it references the title that is associated with the second component. And if you have done pretty much any work in vanilla JS, you know that you need to do quite a bit of acrobatics to get to that point. To essentially have some functionality directly point to that one specific item. And just to give you an example, let me show you one of the JavaScript projects that we're working on my course. I think it was this one, either the questions or the tabs. I think it was tabs. No, sorry, it was the questions. My bad, my bad. We go back, we're going for questions. And notice, I mean, it's not earth shattering functionality. Basically, we're just displaying some kind of content once we click on a tab. But trust me, in order to get to that point where each of these buttons only reference the specific item, it's not as easy as just setting up here the function and the button. So if you open up the developer tools, the sources tab, and more specifically app.js, you'll see that we're selecting all of the questions. We iterate over the questions. As we're iterating, we're selecting the button. And then essentially we toggle the text inside of the function. Now again, there's multiple ways how you can set up the logic. We also cover the alternative. That's not the point. The point is that in vanilla JS, it doesn't come by default. You cannot just right away go to a specific element and say that the functionality is going to apply only to that element you need to do more work. And that is not the case in React. So this is an extremely powerful concept where essentially whatever functionality we'll have inside of the component, it's narrowed down to that component where in vanilla JS, in order to have this type of functionality, you need to jump through the hoops. 
you need to do some acrobatics. In React, it comes by default. We don't need to do anything. 